Today we're going to be talking about a press release that is unguardable if you use it correctly. So the release we're going to be discussing is built off of this hesitation skip or this slide to the outside. So you want to use this release, guys, when we have a DB who's lined up inside shade, whether he's in press man right up on the line of scrimmage, or maybe he is in something called catch man where this DB is like a yard and a half, two yards off, but he's got to be inside shade. So we're going to look at Keenan Allen do this release, and then we're going to show multiple examples of multiple top-level wide receivers doing this exact same type of move. So he comes off the ball, and he does his little skip to the outside, takes off and goes and breaks this thing off on this like five to seven yard out route here. So let's talk about why he decides to do this. So what DBs are taught, guys? Like like anytime that we line up and we pre-snap see a DB who's lined up inside shade in press coverage or man-to-man -man coverage, his goal is to not let the wide receiver get to the inside. Force the wide receiver to the sideline because the sideline is his help. If the wide receiver runs out of bounds, we did our job, right? So our goal as a wide receiver is to try to get this DB to hold to the inside so I get him, so I could beat him by a step to the outside and be able to create some separation. Now there are multiple ways to do this, right? This release is just one of my favorite to use. But what you could do is you can maybe do like a crossover move where you step with your outside foot, you push off of it, then you fake back to the inside, make him think you're running a slant, get him to move, and then go up into my out route. Or you can maybe get a little bit more creative with it and use a release that you could react off of different situations or different looks a DB will throw at you post snap. So what Keenan Allen does here is, and we're going to discuss the steps of this release in a second, but he hesitates to the outside and gives a little hesitation skip as you can see. So what that makes that DB do is make a choice. Do I sit to the inside and play the slant and hold my leverage like I've been taught to do? Because DBs are literally taught this, you guys. How many times have you seen a wide receiver like Devontae Adams, for example, hesitate to the outside, throw a move, and then go run a slant route? Too many times. So DBs are taught whenever you see a deep or wide receiver start to hesitate and he's going at your outside shoulder like this, stay patient, sit to the inside. But as a wide receiver, I could use that to my advantage. If I do that hesitation skip and he wants to sit, then I could go take off and go and go beat him to the landmark of my route, which could be five yards, which could be 10 yards, which could be 15 yards. Or if I'm just running a fade, I might be able to get him by a step, especially if I'm faster than him. So that's why we do this. Now, what would you might say? Okay, well, that's great. You know, coach, that sounds good because, you know, he sits to the inside. Inside, then I beat him to the outside. But what if he jumps? What if he doesn't sit to the inside and I have to run an outside breaking route like a five yard out? Well, if we come off the ball and we do this hesitation skip and that DB jumps to the outside, what do you think I could do? I could put the brakes on on my left foot, take the inside release, get him to open up, then slip back underneath him. I don't got to force it if I don't have to. That's why I like this release because it allows you to be able to react. And we're going to show reactions. We're going to show an example of Tyree Kill doing it and having that same type of reaction where he slips back to the inside and go runs his route. But that's a essentially why we do this release and when we do it. Now, what are the mechanics to it, right? So you could do like a little slide to the outside or you could do this hesitation skip. I'm not going to say it has to be one or the other because I've worked with a lot of receivers that like this little. So the mechanics of this release is you take a step with your back foot. They call that a kick step. So you kick behind your front foot and then you take a double hop or you take a hop with your right foot, right? So you kick and then it's a hop. So it's kick hop with the right, that's the hesitation skip, and then you take off and go, or you could throw a jab with the left foot and slip back inside. Now, I've been around some people that like to kick behind, and then they slide to the outside. It's almost like a shuffle of their feet. Most important thing, though, whether you do that little double step or whether you do that slide, you're attacking on a 45 degree. If you guys do this little like kick and you do this hesitation skip, but you're not attacking vertical, you're attacking towards the sideline, that DB could sit inside, and if you're going flat, and then go vertical, he could cut off your angle on the route. So we have to go at a 45 degree angle. That's why that kick step is important or taking like a little jab with your front foot to push you up vertical is important to make this DB decide. Now, I know it seems a little weird to think about, but again, we're going to show the example of Tyree Kill reacting off of this in a second. So this hesitation skip or hesitation slide and go is unguardable if we use it correctly. So now let's take a look at Tyree Kill doing this. But before we get into this example, you guys, if you're a wide receiver and you guys would like a two-month daily training schedule to follow, check out that very first link in the description below for our ultimate or elite wide receiver training package. What you get access to is eight weeks of daily wide receiver drills and eight weeks of daily wide receiver gym exercise. We break down everything, giving the sets and reps to it. We give a video example of each drill and each gym exercise. We map it out for you. Monday, you're doing this. Tuesday, you're doing that. Wednesday, rest day or speed day, whatever the works, you guys. 
So check out that very first link in the description below, you guys, if you would like a workout plan to help you work on some of the stuff that we covered in this video. So let's get back to this. So now let's look at Tyreek Kill here. So he does kind of more of a slide version of this, but it accomplishes the same thing, you guys. There's many different ways to skin a cat. There's many different ways to beat a DB with your releases. So let's watch what he does. He has to run a fade route here, right? So he comes off the ball. He slides. DB jumps to the outside. Bam, put the brakes on. Let's take that inside release. Let's stack over the top of him, and let's fade with that ball and give my quarterback room to fade me open. So let's talk about even when, and again, right here you might make the argument like, hey, this is Tyreek's speed. But I'm pretty confident all of you can do this. 100% confident all you can do this. Yes, doesn't help running a freaking 4 2 40 yard dash. Absolutely. But let's talk about the technique, right? Because think about it. If Tyreek Hill was truly that fast, he would just run around the guy, but he didn't. This DB jumped to the outside. He put the brakes on and he took what he gave him to the inside. So let's talk about why, right? So pre-snap, we come up. DB's lined up. Middle of his body is even with Tyreek Hill's front foot. That's how you know that DB is lined up inside leverage. So what Tyreek Hill would love to do is just use his speed. He comes off the ball. Look at his first step. He takes that kick behind his front foot. See, he, say, oh, he does like kind of more of a shuffle. That's like that slide element, right? So he slides to the outside. He would love to slide and have this DB sit to the inside patient and then just go beat him with speed. But as soon as he slides, that DB doesn't play the slant. That DB jumps to the outside and plays the fade. And it makes sense because he has safety help, as you can see later on in this clip, to the inside. So he's okay with Tyreek Hill running to the inside. He is just taught, take away the outside release and take away the deep fade ball. So cool. If I'm a receiver and I see that and I see this guy jump, what am I going to do? I'm going to put the brakes on. Tyreek Hill ends up throwing like a little one, two, three crossover, gets that DB to jump even more, but he takes the inside release. As fast as Tyreek Hill is, he's not the biggest guy in the world. I don't know if you guys have ever seen him in person. I did a camp with him one time. He's not a big dude. He's probably my size, just his legs are like triple the size of mine, right? He's way faster than I am. But again, he's not the biggest guy in the world. So if he just slides and just doesn't react and he just forces it and runs, this dude is going to get hands. And I don't care how fast he is. If he's running that fade ball right on the sideline, that's not enough space for the quarterback. It's a fade ball. He's got to fade you open. So take what he gives us with the inside release. Now, I must add that this is probably not something called an MOR. An MOR is a mandatory outside release. If it was a mandatory outside release, this obviously doesn't apply. You would just take off and go because you have to get to the outside. But again, this is not one of those situations and you could take that inside release on the fade and actually be able to stack over the DB. So look at where the quarterback has. He has room to put the ball over his outside shoulder. We ain't doing that if he's right up on the sideline. So that's how you guys can react off of that slide and go or hesitation skip and go release. Remember, if we were going to do that skip version of this, you would kick behind with your left foot. You would take a hop with your right foot and then if that DB jumps, you'd put the brakes on with your left foot and release back to the inside. So it's kick and slide or kick, hop, react or kick, hop and go. So there's a great example of that from Tyree Kill working that move, taking that inside release and stacking over the top. Now you can get a little creative with that release. And this is what we're going to discuss here. So first example, we saw Keenan Allen do what? He did a little skip and took off and ran his out route, right? Last example, we did a little slide. DB jumped to the outside. Bam, put the brakes on, took the inside release. Now, what if I got to run a slant? What if I got to run a five yard in? How could I get creative with this? How could I build other routes off of this specific release? And that's what we're going to watch this wide receiver do. So he's going to be doing a slide diamond release. So when you have a DB who's lined up inside shade and impress, normally what you would do is you would just do a straight up diamond release, which is where you take three steps at his outside shoulder, outside hip. The goal is to get the DB to open up to the fade and you slip back underneath that. A way you can be creative though is pairing that off of how you would actually run your fade ball. Like a guy like Devontae Adams does this a lot. I've seen him do this in the red zone before. So this wide receiver comes up, same slide, one, two, three. And it makes it look more like a fade, you guys. Because again, sometimes me just putting my head down and running to his outside shoulder and outside, it may not sell it. Because the DB is not an idiot, guys. Like, he knows that if you're going to run a fade route, you're probably going to give him some type of fake inside, maybe some type of change in speed, then go run your fade. So if you could run your slant with that same type of change of speed that you would use on a fade, you might be able to get a little more separation against a more disciplined DB. So watch what he does. Watch his first step. See how it kind of, he does like a little bit of a prep step, guys. This is another way to create some speed. Notice how the first two receivers did that kick step with the back foot where they kicked this way. He kind of takes a jab step with his front foot. And that jab step is another way to get the same type of burst on that 45 degree angle to make this DB make a decision. So he gives this little jab. He pushes off of it. You see how he does this little slide, is real patient. Then he goes one, two, and then that DB's thinking fade, three, put the brakes on. Got him to open up. Could he be running a little bit closer to him? I believe so. 
You always want to run as tight as we can to the DB. We never want to run away from the DB because if he breaks and he doesn't run as good of a route as he does and this DB doesn't stumble, I think this DB is able to react, open up, and be able to make a play. But we got to make sure that we run tight, guys. But that is how you pair your releases with other routes. It's not just for a slant, or it's not just for that like five yard out. It's not just for that fade. You could also use this on a slant if you make it look the same. Run your slant exactly how you would run your fade. And trust me, you will see separation like this.